Hi, ma'am. Um, don't forget that this is going to be 20 minutes, and then you're going to read for 10 minutes on your own. Um, our goal is to get to the end of summer uh, in the book. So here we go, top of page 31. You can keep him all for, for, I'll start over. <laughs> you can keep him for all of me, they heard him answer, the child. He's been hanging around the fort these many days. The children were jubilant. Even Caleb and Marguerite felt less troubled by what they had heard as they watched him running to fetch back the stick Jacob threw. Maybe they'll not let us keep him, suggested the practical Susan. Dogs eat a lot, Ma says. He can have some of my supper every night, declared Jacob, with Patty eagerly aiding offers of her. Caleb had said nothing, but Marguerite noticed that he gave the dog's head a pat as, as he went off to finish the grass bundles. Then this she felt to be an unspoken sign that he was on the other their side. He'd ought to have a name, Becky reminded them. Now this was a serious matter for a consideration. They were still discussing it when the dory came in sight with Joe Sar Sargent and Ira pulling hard at the oars. The children fairly tumbled over one another to reach it first as the men brought it up on the beach. Soon there was an incoherent babble about dogs, engines, and a man with a musket. Marguerite stayed a little apart, the dog at her heels, as if he too he knew as if he too knew himself to be an outsider. The touch of his muzzle pressed in her hand it was good to feel. It was a comfort to hear he was to be accepted. Now if we think about text to self or text to text or text to world connections, I remember when we were at the petting zoo together and if you made a text or if you made a connection with an animal this could be a time where you might have a text to self connection, as Marguerite did with the animal. We'll bring him along then, their father had answered, the children's please. He may come in handy scaring off engines, but if he don't, behave. Over he goes, mind you. That night, although they ate heartedly of fresh food from fall mouth, and the wild strawberries were sweet to taste, there were little talk and cheer aboard the Isabella B. Dolly Sargent had greeted her children with a rare show of affection. And Marguerite guessed that what they had heard from the man with the musket was already known to her. After the younger ones were asleep, talk were asleep talk. After the young ones were asleep talk and questionings began. Sorry about that. No doubt as to what was uppermost in their minds now. Marguerite listened with the dog's head resting on her knee, and a chill came on her as she heard. Coming home from church, they were, I repeated some tale, when the engines begun firing at him from behind trees. Only one got to give the alarm, and he crawled the garrison half shot to pieces. Pesky lot engines are, Captain Hunt went on. Ain't had much trouble for almost ten years, lived real peaceful but from small plifferins, and now they broke out again. It's these here terratines that's making the mischief. They're worse than pence, pen spots or passama quads. Long when the French pay them bounty on every English scalp they can show. And that's what we're ahead in, Joe. Dolly's voice broke and sharp, and sharp and anxious. Right into their own country. You heard what they told us. Now don't go up believing all what you hear, her husband tried to soothe her. But I saw those thirty engine scalps with my own eyes, she reminded him. You saw them too, hanging on poles by the fort. Ten more they needed. They said to even up with the white ones taken this last twelve month. And that ain't taken, account of the women and child children carried off to Canada. That's what I'm that's what I'm the feared of, most feared of, Joe. I'm not dast to let the children out of my sight. So this is really the first time or one of the first times that we've heard a conversation about Indians. So what's going on here? Like what's going on here? Um, does location play a role? Maine is definitely closer to the area that than Massachusetts was for the French and Indian War. Um, even though, you know, the entire North American continent did have Indians. Um, but as far as the violence went, 
between different groups and different uh, nations even is uh, what's going kind of on here um, historically. Other folks have raised young ones in such places afore this, he answered. I put, all, I put all I've got into taking over that claim, and I mean to hold it. So keep your courage up and we'll make out. I'll be needing a musket of my own, Pa, Caleb spoke up. With the morning dread lifted somewhat, it was impossible to be so fearful with the water smooth as the polished blue floor and every new headland they, they skirted a fine green adventure. Always the trees were more straight and pointed, pressing closer to the rocky headlands and deeply indented coves and tidewater inlets. Island followed upon island, bristling with untouched spruce, spruce for the most part, though occasionally boasting a farm in a cleared field or two. Got more islands in folks hereabouts, observed Bucky. Yes, her mother agreed. Seemed as if we passed a hundred since this morning. Some of the captains knew by name from his charts the previous voyage. There was Mont Hegan, which he showed them that afternoon, a dark hump shaped rising several miles out of the sea. There, he said, was the finest fishing anywhere save off the banks. It was even said that Norsemen had known it years before other white men sailed along the coast. A small group of fishermen and their families lived there in the shelter of a nearby landlocked harbor. In summer, they did quite a trade in dried fish with, co with coasting vessels. Toward sunset, they sighted another large island some miles out. Isles Al Hot, the captain called it, explaining that once it had been named by the French. Once again, Marguerite quickened to the sound, and Caleb grew scornful. Ain't there enough English ones, he complained, without, without putting on French field R's. Marguerite sighed, but for once the captain was on her side. I always hold it's bad luck to change a name, he said, whether tis an island or a vessel. There was a good Frenchman in these parts, and some seems bad. Yonder a ways is Castine, named for some Barton or Baron, I'm sorry, Baron or another that settled it years ago. He built him a fort there in a town they say it was a wonder to see in the wilderness. Took him an Indian wife he did, too, and carried her back home to France with him. When the English drove him out of the, under the treaty, and a mercy it was they did, remarked Dolly, such a go as on. I'd think shame to tell of him. I'm sorry, I'd think shame to tell of them if I was you. And she gave Captain Hunt a severe handshake. Head shake, excuse me. Well, he kept peace with the engines at any rate. Weren't no such raids and scalp and why he was round. We've talked about Dolly Sargent's character. What's her viewpoint towards Indians? What about Ira? And what about the captain? I'm not sure necessarily we know Marguerite's viewpoints at this point. Marguerite dared not show her pleasure in what she had heard, but long after... But long after the talk had changed to other matters, she also treasured the cap she treasured the captain's words. These salvages could not be so terrible if a baron of France had taken one for his wife. Of that, she felt certain. That night, they anchored in the lee of several small islands. Less than another day, if the wind held, and they would reach their own point. But it was difficult course to pick, the captain said. My, but it'll seem good to sleep under a roof again, said Dolly. I only hope that a house you took over with the claim is built four square and solid. He allowed twas the of the best pine boards anywhere about, Flint did, her husband assured her, and tree nailed. I made sure of that for I bought him out. But they slept aboard the Isabella B the next night as well for the fog came down from the east in a thick gray wall. Nothing's for it but to set, Captain Hunt had announced when they woke to find themselves shut and fast. Even if there was wind enough for me to edge along, I wouldn't risk getting up one of these ledges. No Penscott's Bay, no place. Excuse me, no. Penscott's Bay is no place for that without, you know, every island and point in it. 
It was tiresome waiting there in the chill grayish light. When they went below, the little captain cabin was filled to overflowing, and if they stayed above the damp gathering in the drops on the hair in their faces. Clothes clung clamly, and the Isabella B. dripped from stern to stern. Marguerite sat huddled in the opening of the hatch, her feet tucked under her for warmth, and her fingers busily, busy in knitting. She and Dolly Sargent were already turning the wool into stocking and mittens against cold weather. Marguerite was able with her needles. The four bone sticks moved swiftly through the fingers that held them and that held them felt stiff with the chill. Jacob and Patty sat below her on the next steps, little drops forming on their short fair hair. Caleb was learning to box the compass under Captain Hunt's direction. They could hear him repeating the points over and over in a sing-song that seemed to almost point of the water slapping at the vessel's side and the creaking of boards and anchor ropes. No, no, east, he was droning. East, no, east, east, so, east, so, so, east. A gull flew overhead with a shrill cry. So low they could see its orange fleet feet fat flattened against a white body and the bright, wrestling, moving eyes. Seagulls looking out for fish, remarked Ira as he came by. Likely we best do the same. Top of page 36. They are wise birds, Marguerite answered, more at her ease as she always was with him. They need not say no, no, east to know where they are going. Ira laughed so his teeth showed strong and white in his sunburned face. Have you been marking down your notes, key points, questions? Yes, he said. There's a time a bird, there's times a bird has it easier in folks for all their learning. The men made another catch of cod and haddock, Dolly Sargent cooking. The men made another catch of cod and haddock. Dolly Sargent cooking them over a fire in the iron kettle round which the children gathered for comfort. Pumpkin, as the dog had been christened because of his color, hung about, hung about, catching such scraps as were tossed to him, tossed him. In those two days, he had become one of them. He, his every move and look belonged to the pattern of this adventure in which each of them had a part. He's got the softest tongue, Becky said, as the dog lip licked her hand. Yes, added Susan, and that's a queer thing. Uncle Ira, what for What for have dogs a smooth tongue and cats rough ones? If I knew the answer to that, I'd be riser, wiser than the man in the wilderness, he told her. Do you collect that old rhyme they used to send us back home, Joe? Do you recollect, like recollect, that old rhyme that they used to send us back home, Joe? The man in the wilderness says to me, how many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him, I thought I could, as many red herrings as grow in the wood. <laughs> That's a funny poem. Um, think about how our author, Rachel Fields, used poetry. She's used poetry twice, one in the introduction and one here. What signifies this poem, if any? Let's read it again, just for good measure. The man in the wilderness says to me, how many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought I could, as many wren herons grow in the wood. So just thoughts, food for thought. Trust you to remember the foolish sayings and forget the rest, returned Joel Sargent with a shrug. But the children repeated the rhyme after Ira till they knew it by heart, and Marguerite stored it away as a treasure in her mind. By mid-morning of the next day, the sun burned off the fog and they could continue on. Though with the wind, the with the wind still easterly, they made slower progress, and must keep closer to shore. Still, the children were in good spirits again, watching each new island and rock, rocky promontory, and Joel Sargent seemed possessed of new vigor, as they approached their goal. There was still a hint of fog in the air, and a far white bank on the horizon. And then suddenly, as Marguerite stood on the wooden rail, her eyes shaded against the brightness, a miracle of mountains came into the sea. I just wanted you to notice that last sentence. It's 
one, two, three, four lines long. Take a look at the commas, after suddenly, before as, after brightness, before a. I just thought that was a, a pretty unique sentence. Like dim blue monsters swimming away from land, they loom to the northeast directly over Il Isabella B's blunt bow. We haven't talked too much about figurative language, but blue monsters swimming, right? They're, um, the mountains are not monsters, but she's personifying them or adding personal touches, um, personal characteristics to the mountains of swimming and um, making them blue monsters. Pretty cool. The rich green and tawny browns of the nearby shores only serve to make the apparition more strange and unearthly. Marguerite caught her breath, and her heartbeats quickened to the sight. Mount Desert, she heard Captain Hunt explaining. See, there tis a chart. Isles, D's, Monts. Caleb was spelling it out. D-E-S-E-R-T-S. -E Queer kind of name for such a great island. A Frenchman, Champlain, the first that first sailed up this way, charted it so his on his maps. The captain explained. Account of the hills being so high from the water and bare on the top, look most as blue as indigo they do today. But if you was to sail up close, You'd see they weren't. I cruise along there. It's a sightly place. Top of page 38. We'll see him for our point, Joel told Dolly with pride. I recollect, he told me, Flint did. He, I recollect, start over. I recollect that he told me that, Flint did. He said we'd find no finer prospects all up and down the coast. Marguerite was glad that Caleb was not to see the tears that stood in her eyes. The mountains had been so been blue and beautiful even enough before, but now that she knew them by name, they would be different to her. She felt sure that Grammier and Uncle Pierre would feel easier about her if they could know this. And there still remained a French name to bear in the company in this strange, thickly wooded country of islands and rocky shores. But points near at hand soon engaged the sergeant family's attention. Ira and Caleb did the captain's bidding in the matter of shifting sail and shortening or letting out the ropes. While Joel eagerly compared each headland and island they passed with the rough chart where his own claim had been marked. A queer tenseless was on them, on them all. Even the animals sensed this, turning their heads shoreward and sniffling alert. Only a couple more headlands to pass and we'll likely see it, Joel said to the little group about him. It's all the same, as it's written here. There's old horse ledges to the, to the east of us, and there's a little pair they call the sisters, and the bigger one beyond, the sun, beyond is Sunday Island. Folks by the name of Jordan have settled there. I can just make it out the clearing in the house. They'll be our na nearest neighbors, I guess. Smokes are coming out of their chimney, Susan pointed out presently. Praise be for that, said Dolly Sargent, hugging the baby closer. Marguerite saw that her cheeks were flushed with excitement, that she had pushed her bonnet back from her forehead the, be to, the better to see. Jacob and Patty pressed close, their hands reaching for hers. Look over that away, Maggie, Patty said, and watch for our house. Our house, that away, Jacob repeated after her, pointing to the thickly woods pointed ahead. There'll be a cove and a good laden land and beach, Joel was saying, with one side spruce woods and the clearing on the other. Yes, the house looks to be on the far side, said maybe set maybe a hundred and fifty yards up from the water line. You'll see. No one aboard spoke as the Isabella B nosed her round nosed her way around the last point. Surf made a soft thundering below, dark cliffs, and a seagull started crying up from a weedy ledge. That was all. Marguerite's heart was beating hard under the waist of her holland dress. Her fingers tightened about the children's hands as they pressed close to the rail. Then suddenly she felt a queer numbness. There were the cove of the strip pebble beach, even as 
he had said, with the woods on one side and the cleared peace on the other, there were even a worn line of path going up from the water to place where the house had, where the house should have stood. But the house itself was missing, empty and solitary. The patch of the open green spanned before them in the late afternoon light. No one spoke for a full minute. Joel Sargent stared dully before him, the chart limp between his fingers. Caleb and Ira rooted, stood rooted in their places. And Dolly's eyes were almost as wide as the children's. So take a moment. What's going on? Check your sheet. Can you add anything? Top of page 40. Jacob was the first to break the silence. Where is it? He cried out shrilly. Shirley, where's our house? The Lord knows, his mother had answered him, and her voice shook. Marguerite was never to forget the next few hours of despair that settled on them, with, on them all. More chilly and heavy than the fog, which had closed around their boat the day before. Dolly's broad face was drawn into new lines of trouble. Joel Sargent looked grim as granite under his sunburn, and even Ira had no word of cheer for the scared children and Marguerite as they landed as he landed them in the second boat house boatload, excuse me. The sun was slipping behind the ranks of crowding spruce spruces but they still lingered in a woe-begone little group about that the blackened ruins of the cellar at the head of the path. Here twas, Joel kept repeating as if somehow that made a difference. Twas part of the chimney made from stones loaded up from the beach, Sames Flint said. Don't talk to me of him, Dolly broke out bitterly. He tricked you in taking this claim. I mistrusted there was no good in it, else why would he be leaving? But you wouldn't listen to reason, and now look where you've brought us, not even a roof over our heads. I'll raise another one for you, Dolly, Joel answered. You and the want young ones shan't want for one longs there's trees and axes to fell with them. Before she could even answer him, there were, came a hail from the water. Two men in the dory were rolling into the cove. Pumpkin ran, barking towards them. The others hurried after. Marguerite came last with Debbie in her arms and the younger children at her skirts. So, top of page 41. Take a moment. See if you can add anything. You're going to be responsible to read for 10 more minutes. At this rate, I think that you should get done with possibly 40, page 44. Make your goal to finish to page 45. We'll pick up Remember, our goal for this week is to try to get to um, the end of summer. That's on page 60. This is the longest section. It happens to be the first section. Happy reading.